All right, so one of the steps to uh, enticing followers is to have your account properly filled in with your logo and your story and all of that. Uh, the other aspect is to actually create content. So if you see a button that says, meet the new Google Plus, simpler, faster, click Let's Go. We want to switch back to the new Google Plus, and that is annoying to switch back and forth, but eventually it's all going to move over to the new Google Plus. So however, if you see maybe a button on the bottom left corner, click it. We want to get into the new Google Plus. It's new because it's got the, the more solid colors and such, but um, then we need to, let's see, on the top left corner, there's a back arrow. Click that. I apologize if I don't have the answer exactly sometimes because I'm also getting used to the new one. I've been using Google <coughs> I've been using Google Plus since the beginning, which I believe was 2012, and they've recently changed this, so I'm also getting used to the new interface. But um, does everyone see a screen that says home, and you've got buttons like this? If you don't, let me know right away so that we're all on the same page. Okay, let's figure that out, because it is one far behind it, and it is annoying to have different interfaces. Everyone has the home screen with the new interface. So what we've got here is uh, the main Google Plus home page. This top left menu oftentimes will help navigate you around unless you're in, in some of those like deep levels of the site. And I've found that if you're not seeing this menu on the left, oftentimes you can get back to it by going to the top right and then clicking on either My Business or Page. Those are two different things, and this is what I'm seeing, these little annoying things that I'm seeing with the new interface. My Business will show you the screens we were at a moment ago to edit those aspects of the page, and the actual Google Plus page should take you to the main screen to use the Google Plus. So basically to edit your Google Plus and to use your Google Plus, it seems. So I'm in the Google Plus page, and I've got here home and buttons on the left. You can hide these, but I usually keep them visible. So what I've got here is um, um, what I've got here On the left is Home, Collections, Community, Profile, and People. Well, um, yeah, that's... Hmm. What happens if you guys click on Profile? Does it still show you the name of your business? Okay, I think we'll be okay there. Um, hmm. so it looks like it, although it doesn't have all of those same sorts of boxes to fill in. Did you click on manage page? Let's not get distracted. Oh, I'm so, sorry. <laughs> um, 
wherever we're at here, let's stick on the home page for a moment. Um, the home page is where, like any other social network, you're going to see the latest posts. And maybe right now you see a bunch of posts that look similar to mine or not. And if you, if you don't, that's okay. But if you do, this is content again. Uh, Google Plus is trying to make the system pretty friendly for you to use to reach out to people, to find people. So you're going to see perhaps trending on Google Plus. As you use it more, you will get content that you, you, would, you would care about much more because it doesn't know about what is valuable to your business. Because even as a business page, I still want to follow other accounts. I want to get followers, definitely, because followers are my captive audience. When I post something here, my followers could see it. But right now I've got zero followers, so no one's going to see what I post. It's still valuable for me as a business to follow other accounts on Google Plus, like this Tina's Bakery that it's suggesting to me, it's valuable because that can give me inspiration. What am I going to post again? If I make a goal for myself to post something new on Google Plus once a week, eventually I'm going to run out of ideas, perhaps. But if I'm following other people's accounts, um, they're going to be posting stuff that might, in, that might inspire me to post something. So anything that you see here, let's say this person, Natasha R. She posted this. Any account that you see, do you see they've got their little icon? Click on their icon. It takes you to their profile, where it shows their interests, their posts, And if they seem like an interesting account, I would follow. Following is adding them to a circle. Remember when I said um, I'm putting my contact information and I'm setting it that it's visible to my circles. Now she could see that information, not just anyone that stumbles across my page. So I'll click OK, got it. And following that account because there is a value and it's a good tactic to get followers I can follow accounts it's not the best tactic we'll talk about better tactics but it is a good tactic to browse content on Google Plus to go to that search at the top and let's say I look for cookies if I search for cookies all the stuff about cookies will appear here like Aaron Vasicek posted this. What else did Aaron post? So I can click on a profile. I can look at what they post. Great stuff. I want to follow that. I want to see that when they post something new. Five hours ago this was posted. Two weeks ago that was posted. So the point of the follow is I'm following these accounts and as I return to my home screen I'll start to see content of those accounts and those concepts that I care about. And it is valuable to follow other accounts for inspiration, to keep up with what's going on. And what's also valuable about that is that some of these accounts that you follow, they will follow you back. Not all of them, but some will follow you back. Therefore, I'm building my audience this way. As I build their audience, I can build my audience. If I'm tired of following, just click the same button unfollow. But before we go on a follow frenzy, remember what I said about why would, why would someone follow us? My profile isn't fully completed, I need my logos and such. But worse, I don't have any content. They don't have any way really to know what I'm about. What, are, what am I posting? Why would I want to follow? As you saw me, I looked at some of these accounts and I see that there's cool pictures and links and content. I see stuff that I'm enticed to follow. I don't have any content yet. So before I go in to do the, all of this following, let's take a moment instead to post something. And yes, I don't have any followers, but I still want to post something to entice future followers. So let's click on the home button wherever you're at. 
see, I'm starting to see Natasha's posts and Aaron's posts. But at the top it says, what's new with you? So if you click on that text, it pops up to share. Let's look at this. This is a very simple but powerful screen. Uh, Victor's Bakery, so my company eventually when I add my graphic and logo will, will appear there. I'm sharing this public so anyone on Google Plus, anyone on Google Search could find this post. If I want to alter that, I can click that and say, well, show it to circle. I'll explain the circles and such a little bit more in a moment, so don't worry about that, but I'll keep it as public. Uh, I can write content here. I can attach more than one picture if I want, so I can, uh, I can upload a little photo gallery. I can add a link and I can add a location. Let's start basic. Let's add a basic text post. So think of ter in terms always when you share something, when you post something, what's in it for the followers? What's in it for potential followers? What's in it for them? What's in it for me is that I want to get traffic and followers and sales and all of that. But what's in it for them? So let's say this is my very first post. So if I write, um, hello world, we're on Google+. This is not a good post. What's in it for other people? Who cares? You and a thousand other people have joined in this last hour. Okay, well, I'm going to say hello world, we're on Google+. Follow us for exclusive content, exclusive coupons. and tasty photos. In the social media class, if you take that, we get more practice because we do this over and over for every network. Uh, every network is, is, uh, is different in how you use it, uh, the interface and such that is, but why you use it is all universal, to get followers, to get traffic, to make sales, to whatever it is you're trying to do online. So all of them apply. I can apply these same concepts on Twitter. Why am I going to tweet? Not to say what I had for breakfast, but to say what I had for breakfast, follow this link for you to buy that breakfast, let's say. And so here I've written something a bit more in terms of why might a person follow. Follow us for exclusive coupons. We'll look at the other icons in a moment, but let's just click post, because what we can do is go, go back to edit our post or delete our post. I posted this. All zero of my followers have seen this now. I don't have followers, but again, I want to post stuff before I try to get followers. Let's say I made a mistake. If you um, click on the post, you should get these little three buttons. The funny thing is that this menu up here has the nickname of the hamburger menu, and I just heard that this nickname has the nickname, uh, this menu has the nickname of the kebab menu because it's like a little kebab stuck with falafel or something. So the kebab menu, the menu of the post. If you, if you open that up, then you have these different actions. Delete the post. Maybe I shouldn't have posted that actually. Maybe I posted it too early or whatever reason. I can delete it. I can go back to edit it and then these other options which we'll look at later. But if I go back to edit, I can go back to further edit it. So you have that control. Mm -hmm. if you, uh, <clears throat> I noticed when you initially create a post, you, you have the ability to add a photo, but that post you did, could you go back and retroactively add a photo to it? You know? No, let me confirm. I don't think so. I'm, I'm, I'm back there on edit, but no, the buttons are no longer there. So you would have to add the post, uh, the photo or other things at the moment you created it, but you can edit the text of it. Let's say I'm going to post again. So if I click on the what's new, I can add a photo. Notice you can also directly add a photo without popping that open. You can click photo and then add a photo. But let's say I clicked on what's new with you. It pops open here and then it says I want to share a photo. Our latest cupcakes. You want to think in terms about what's in it for your followers, yes, but not so much to the degree that every single one of your posts is an ad, is a hard sell about me, me, me. 
there is a balance about sharing actionable content such as click here for a coupon and content that is just fun and, and frivolous and just adding to the conversation and building a community. So here I'm not really going to say check out our latest cupcakes, click here for a coupon, click here to buy. I'm just going to share a picture of a cupcake because as I get followers and they scroll through their stream and they see that photo, I might not have to do the hard sell about buy it, but I'm uh, building a community. So let's say instead of simply writing text, I can click to add the photo. I don't have any photos in my account, so I'd have to upload a photo. And if you have a photo, you can do that. There's a few sample photos on our computers. If you do want to practice this, adding a photo, you can click the, the button and then go on the left side here to pictures. Is on the left pane all the way at the top, pictures. Sample pictures. This, this is obviously not a picture of a cupcake, but I'm just going to show it as an example. So that photo has been attached to that post. I can attach more as well. And there's two photos that will be added to this post. I'll just do one. But um, So we've seen this sort of thing before. We've seen in other networks, Facebook, that you can attach a photo. You can attach a photo on Twitter. So in that regard, Google is not, is not different. But here's something that's different that the other networks don't do at the moment. You can actually add a little bit of text formatting to your text. So instead of just being plain old text like everyone else, you can add bold, italics, and strike through. The trick for that is you have to add, you have to add some markup. That just means you have to do it like this. This will be bold. The word bold will be bold because I'm going to put asterisks around it. So if I put asterisks around a word or a sentence or a paragraph, after I post it, it will become bold, not at the moment here. This will be italics. Italics is achieved by doing underscores. You wrap underscores around what you want to be italicized, and it becomes italicized after you post it. This will be strike through. Those are dashes. Wrap a dash. You might not know what a strike through is. You'll see it in a moment when I post it. But here's how you can put a little bit of formatting. And the purpose of this is to stand out. When everyone else is posting plain old text and you judiciously put in a few bolds or italic text here and there, that'll stand out from the people when they're scrolling through the plain text. After I post it, bold italic strike through. Just one moment. You obviously don't want to put bold for your whole paragraph because this is stuff for emphasis. When you emphasize everything, you emphasize nothing. So you want to emphasize parts of, of your post because as I'm browsing, I'm not seeing a lot of other people taking advantage of that oh, over here. So let's put it to the test. What term do you use? There's some text over here, but this stood out for me, and I read that right away. And then I went back and read this over here. Question. Oh, I'm sorry. This, uh, that, that's not standard uh, HTML, right? That those, no. Is there, what do you find the key to, is there a list of what those, how to do that? I mean, it, this, these are the only three. You oh, can't, you can't okay. do other things. So well, it's just those three. Anything. Yeah. You can't add, you can't make columns, you can't use any other sort of HTML. This is the basic of it, and this is all that it has. So asterisks for bold, underscores for italics, dashes for strike through. I can easily see myself using bold and italics, and I hardly use strike through. You might want to use strike through, like let's say you posted something, and then you've got over here update. Let's say you're gonna update your post. So you make yourself sort of a little section. We now serve mega cupcakes.
So there's a part right here that looks like that that stands out. And then later on I could say, we sold out of Mega Cupcakes, so I strike through. I was that for some reason it took away the, the markup up here, but used it down here. So we'll just add it again. Ah, oh, it took it away from here. This is new. This did, we didn't do this before. We've only had it once. Yeah, so maybe... One, one word or one sentence. One word, one sentence. So maybe now Google changed it because it used to be maybe people went crazy with it and they put it all over the place. So now, so that so that we don't get back into those into those hellish days of MySpace, where people were putting crazy things all over the profile, I guess they kind of tamped down on it a little. So you'll be doing this, and I recommend three or five or ten posts before you try to get followers. Again, you're going to be posting three things to no one five things to no one, ten posts to no one. But as you post stuff and someone eventually when I start to follow people and they check out my profile and start to see my content and say that's a good account to follow. I see interesting content I want to follow. So that's the way that I would do it. I post stuff to no one and then get followers. And we'll talk about getting more followers in a moment. But let's practice a little bit more with posting because we've also got the ability for a link. And this is very useful because if you attach a link, so if you have a link to your blog, let's say, or an article or something, and you attach that link, it'll try to create a preview for you. It just took the logo of the company, but let's say I linked it directly to a blog post, like some of these people are doing over here. This photo in the back is going off to their website. They added a link. And so Google Plus created a little preview. It added this text for me. And it added the text for me, and then it made a preview. I have over here, uh, I can do this. It looks like I can cycle through some of the pictures. Just for practice here, let's say I'm linking this over to our app, and so I put the link, I put some text, why would you care? Well, it keeps you up to date, and then I can post it. So what happens there is my followers would then see in their home screen, they would see my post that looks like this, and this would be an active link. If someone clicks it, it automatically goes back to my site. We have text shares, photo shares, link shares, and location shares. If you attach a location, if you've got an actual location like this, you can attach the location. If you've got your business fully set up here, you will eventually show up in location. So then the use of that is that you've got a post about sale this Saturday in store only. And you attach a location so when someone then sees the post on their phone, for example, they can get directions, driving directions to your location. location attached to a map and you can get driving directions and everything.
All right, so the tactic is, and, and this works on all the networks, you're posting content, then you're going to follow some accounts, some of them will follow you back. The more efficient way is to post content directly to those that would care the most. And Google Plus has two mechanisms that are, that are pretty amazing in order for you to do that. One of them is collections. This is pretty new and Google is really hyping it nowadays. As soon as you come in, it's, it's all about collections. What collections are, if you click collections, these are people that have created these collections of content, of technology, of black and white and monochrome photography, of jazz. These are regular people or companies that create a collection. And let's say I want to look at the jazz mix collection. If I uh, don't click follow yet, but if you click on the thumbnail of a collection, it'll show you what's in the collection. So Arnie is posting these items uh, regarding jazz. And so, okay, lots of interesting stuff. I could click follow. Now what's going to happen with that is, I didn't follow his main account to see everything that he posts. I followed this particular subsection of his account just about jazz. So I'll only see his jazz posts. In a moment, we will create collections. Because eventually, as you use Google Plus more and more, and create collections and such, eventually you, your collections will show up here. Your collections could appear for someone where then they can follow your collection. And you're posting to the collection the same thing as always. Photos, links, uh, location, text, whatever. You're posting stuff to a person that would really care about that, like food and drink photography from Gordon. I don't want to follow all of Gordon's posts. I don't want his whole account because he's going to be talking about things I don't care about. But on this one, definitely something that I would care about, so I could click follow. And he's got right now one million followers of that collection. If I go look at his profile, he in general also has a million followers. He's a verified account. But I didn't choose to follow his main account because I don't want to see some of this other stuff, like this photography stuff. You know, I want to see the food stuff. So I only followed that food collection. So collection is not there. It's not them. It's a subset. It's just a subset. It's not all their 100 posts. It's only their 20 posts about food. So this is more about that concept of specialization. People want to know or, or want to follow or want to buy the things that they, they care about that are very specific to them. Um, people buy books, but there's people that have, a, have an affinity to a certain kind of book, so they're being sold that kind of book. Same kind of concept here where I might be posting about a lot of different topics related to food, but what if I create a collection re focused on vegan-friendly baked goods, gluten-free friendly baked goods, or, you know, chocoholic baked goods. So the people that really care about a particular topic can follow that one topic and they'll see those posts. And notice in this screen here, the collections, these are featured, eventually you'll be featured as well. We can also search up here. If I don't find something I'm looking for, I can search the ones that you have followed, you should call that following, but those that you have followed will show up here. If you no longer want to follow, there will be a button to unfollow. And yours, the collections that you've created, I don't have any, but I highly recommend to think about how can I define my content if I put it into a collection for people to follow. Create collection, what's the name? Vegan, friendly, goodies. This can have a tagline so people can read what it's about before they follow it. You have this visibility that it can be public or just to your connections or private. But notice, once set, this can't be changed. If you set it to only your circles, then you can never put that back to public.
So it's up to you to decide, but probably you'll want this public. You'll want to be featured, because if you put it on one of these other options, you won't be featured, because it's locked down. No one else can see it. Tagline. Only best. <coughs> So now I've got, also I can do a little bit of uh, design here, choose a picture, choose a color and such. People that have you in circles automatically follow this collection. Um, that's good there. If they follow your main account, they will also follow your sub-accounts. Because the question comes up, if I put it only in a collection, will other people see it that don't follow that collection? If you leave this on and they follow your main account, they will also see your collection content. If they choose to only follow your collection, they'll only see your collection, not your main content. So that's, I think, a good one to have on. I would save it. And now here on the bottom right corner, I've got this little pencil. That's the same sort of post button that we saw previously. The difference is that this is being shared to my collection. That icon there is the collection icon. I can change that still, but whatever I'm going to add here is is added directly to that collection. So for this business page, is there any reason why you wouldn't want everything in front of Usually not. Usually you want everything public. There's probably a few use case scenarios that you can't quite think of at the moment, but there would be some why you don't want everything public. Maybe it is, you know, there's there's clubs that you can't come in if you're not cool enough. So maybe you would want some privacy for some reason to really only allow some people to see your content. Yes. Oh. When it was public, hmm. um, we had all sorts of people off the street just coming to drink and eat. Huh. So then we switched it, so it would go into their circles. Okay, good, good. So that's there. You can have some exclusivity to get the, the, the clientele that really would care about seeing the, the art. Okay. Um, this has a menu as well where you can go back to edit, check who the followers are, delete the collection, share the collection. But if I go back to my menu of collections, that's how you find it again. Featured, eventually you'll be featured. Notice how this changed here. I got drinks, I got Monterey Bay, Marine Life. Here's who I'm following. I've followed Natasha, and she had these collections, so I've automatically followed her collections as well. But let's say actually I don't want to know about burgers, hot dogs, and subs, so I can go to a collection and say, never mind, don't follow that one unfollowed. And then your collection, you can create as many as you want. And once you create them, they'll be listed here. And then you can get traffic that way. This is oops, collections. This is your this is another way to get more followers. And for businesses, followers are very important because that's your captive audience, the audience that has chosen to follow what, what you're posting. Let's take one more break because I then want to look at another aspect of Google Plus that I like even more than collections that I think is even more powerful. And it really does work, I have to say, because in my experience, if I post the same content, so this is a totally unscientific biased um, anecdote, but it has worked for us. If I post the same thing verbatim, Google+, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, whatever, the way I'm going to show you usually gets much more results, many more results, much more results on Google+, the way I'm going to show you. Even if we've got more followers on Facebook, the way I'm going to show you often results in more activity on Google+. So let's take a break with that with that teaser, and when we come back at uh, 
noon, 12. I'll show you what, it, what that is.